Are you serious? Are you serious? Folks, this is one of the most exciting archaeological discoveries I've ever seen. I mean, we've seen a lot in the last 10 years that are, it shows you God is revealing more and more and more uh, that we're in the end times as he allows these discoveries to continue to happen. But uh, Wayne of Canada sent this to me. Wow, this is a prophecy, Bible prophecy alert, big time. Get a cup of coffee and get your Bible, and you're going to have to go to Joshua chapter 22. And then let me first, though, read to you what they discovered in Israel. Wow, ancient Jewish altar was found in Shiloh. Are you serious? I mean, I want to shout right now. I don't know if this is that altar. I don't know if this is the altar that we're talking about in Joshua 22, but it wouldn't shock me anymore. They found King David's palace. They found the little olive seeds in the storehouse. And Haggai said, is there any seeds in the barn? He asked that question in Haggai 2.19, and they found them. I mean, this is the kind of stuff they keep finding. Well, get this. This is amazing. An, an ongoing archaeological dig is still going on in ancient Jewish village of Shiloh which is up there in Samaria, okay, has turned up a stone altar dating back thousands of years. The altar is believed to date back in the period from roughly 1200 BCE to 600 CE, known as the Iron Age, okay? Now, more specifically, archaeologists are dating it to what some Israeli researchers are calling the Israelite era the period of time after the nation of Israel entered into the land of Israel and before the destruction of the first temple. Okay, now keep that in mind. That's the time frame. The altar is 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters and the height of 40 centimeters and was found on the southern edge of the site of the ancient city of, or there of Shiloh. Now, it had been used in the construction during of a uh, certain types of structure that had been built. However, the markings on the stone indicated its use in religious ceremonies prior to its being used as a building material. So it has it has religious or Hebraic symbols on it, which shows it was used for religious ceremonies. They know that Shiloh was a home to the tabernacle brought with the Jews as they entered the land of Israel from the wilderness, the tabernacle. It served as the site of the religious pilgrimage until King Solomon constructed the first temple in Jerusalem. So this was a very holy, sacred site. And the altar that I'm going to read to you about in Joshua is extremely important in the history of the 12 tribes of Israel. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, get this. In the summer of 2013, the archaeologists revealed that they had found the remains of the biblical Israel, Israelites' tabernacle site. They'd already found the spot where the tabernacle had once been. Now they have found the altar of Shiloh. Now, you say, so what, Paul? What's the big deal? It's huge. Go with me to Joshua 22. Let's, let's, let's glean through this. This is un something biblical is definitely going on, folks, with these signs of the second coming of Christ. You understand the importance. In Joshua 22, the Bible says, Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh. Now, of course, Reuben was the oldest son of the 12 sons of Jacob, so his tribe was called the Reubenites, and of course Gad, his tribe is called the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh was one of the sons of Joseph. All right, so that's the tribes. These are three different tribes. And so Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, and he said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I've commanded you. Ye have not left your brethren, these many days unto this day, but you have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren as he promised them. 
Therefore, now, return ye, get you into your tents, and, and unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of Jordan. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them, and they went away. They went to the land that had been promised them for their tribes. Now, let's go all the way down to verse 10. When they got there, here's what they did. Look at verse 10. And when they came into the borders of Jordan, that are in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh, built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see, to, to for every, okay? They built a special altar in Shiloh. What? Uh, hold it. Why'd they do this? Okay. Now, uh, go down to verse 12. And when the children of Israel, though, the ones that they left just across Jordan there, when the children of Israel heard it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up to war against them. They thought that they had went and built a big altar to start worshiping an idol god. They, you know, this is the way people are today, especially in Christianity. In, uh, some of the denominations of Christianity because they don't understand how another denomination is worshiping their, t their style of worship or their type of worship unto the Lord, because it's a little different to what they're doing, they immediately demonize them. That is, that is the spirit of religion, and that is a carnal mind. That's a carnal mind. You see, if you walk in the spirit, you don't obey the, law, the, the, the lust of the flesh or the law of the carnal mind. To be carnal minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. And that's exactly what it is. That's a carnal mind. All religious spirits operate in the flesh and are carnal minded. People who walk in the spirit of God walk in the spirit of love and edification to the body of Christ. Wow. You need to grab that one. Okay. That was free. I threw that one in for free. Okay. But don't no, no, go on here. Look, so they, they get all up big. They got all messed up and got all upset and just said, we'll go up there and fight them. Now, here's what happens. They decide to go up there. So when they get up there, they begin to immediately accuse the Reubenites, the Gadiites, and half the tribe of Manasseh. They begin to accuse them of going into idol worship. But look at verse 17. They even bring up the, the iniquity of Peor. Said, man, that was, you know, it, look, this was terrible. We Remember when we got messed up with that? Here you guys are again going back into another idol worship. And oh, by the way, they even mention, look at verse 20. And, and did not Achan, the son of Zehar, commit a trespass in the accursed thing? And it brought this wrath upon the congregation of Israel. They remind him again, hey, don't you remember that? that that's when they took down the city of Jericho. Joshua told him when, they went, when, the, when the walls fell, don't take nothing from Jericho. It's a cursed city. Leave everything there. Don't, don't pick up any of the spoil. Because normally they would gather spoil. But the Lord said, don't touch it. It's a, an accursed city. But Achan picked up a Babylonian garment, a wedge of gold, and 50 shekels of silver, and took it and hid it in his tent. And because of that, 36,000 uh, uh, Isra uh, Israelites were killed. I think it was 36,000, it may have been 36. Anyway, they lost to a little city called Ai because there was sin in the camp. They had to go dig this out. All right, so here they are. They're reminding them of when they fell one time into idol worship, when, when Achan sinned and brought, and so they're saying, you guys are up here getting ready to bring a tremendous judgment on us because you've disobeyed the Lord. But, but they, didn't give, they didn't give these guys a chance to explain what they were doing. Now, go to verse 26. The Bible says, therefore we said, this is their speaking now, let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offerings, not for sacrifice, this isn't for idol worship, but that it may be a witness between us, you and our generations after us, that we might do the service of the Lord before him with burnt offerings and with sacrifices and with peace offerings, that your children may not say to our children down the road, 
that, that, that we had no part of the Lord. Let's build an altar here at Shiloh as an altar of remembrance, an altar of commitment, a, a milestone of all of us agreeing that we're all walking in the laws of God. I mean, this is amazing. And skip on down to verse 29. God forbid, they said, that we should rebel against the Lord and turn this day from following the Lord to build an altar for burnt offerings, for meat offerings, or for sacrifices besides the altar of the Lord our God that is before his tabernacle. We, we, we wouldn't dare build a different altar. We've got one called the brazen altar. This is a different altar. This is an altar of thanksgiving. This is an altar of peace. This is an altar, a milestone of remembrance of the commitment that all of us, all 12 tribes, are following the Lord. Let's build an altar at Shiloh. And I'm going to tell you something. I've preached before, folks. Sometimes we need to go back to Bethel. There's a special altar built there. We need to go back to Shiloh. Remember, Shiloh's altar has to do with the unity of the 12 tribes of Israel. And if you want to apply that to Christianity today, it also is, has to do with the unity of the body of Christ, including Messianic Jews. Can you grab this or are, can you get a hold of this? So why in the world? So look at verse 31. And so Phoenicius, the son of Eleazar, the priest, said unto the children of Reuben and unto the children of Gad and to the children of Manasseh, this day we perceive that the Lord is among us. <laughs> Woo, because you have not committed this trespass against the Lord. Now ye have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. You guys didn't sin. Praise God. And they built the altar of Shiloh. Now, here's the question. This is the, this is the question. Is it possible that the archaeologists just found that altar, is it, because this is where the children of Israel lived and the tabernacle was with them. They wouldn't have built any other altar, folks. The tabernacle was the only altar that they needed besides this one of, of, this, of remembrance. So is this the altar of Shiloh? What? And God is revealing. His word is true. Don't you ever doubt it. And believe me this, let me, or believe this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Something biblical. <laughs> no wonder. Somebody asked me, why did you put that on that cup? I said, because something biblical is going on. Jesus is coming. Praise God. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We are truly living in the last days. And the Lord is confirming his word.